Some of the best advice I've ever received came almost 30 years ago when I was in high school. I was a band nerd back in those days, and so in the summers I went to band camp. And at one particular band camp, I remember one afternoon we were standing in the hallways, and one of the the, the older um, professional musicians, he happened to be a trumpet player, which I was, so I was kind of enamored with him. Um, he and I and a couple other campers were standing around shooting the breeze in the hallway. And I don't remember exactly how we ended up with him giving us this advice, but um, at some point he said to us, I, he just kind of shook his head in response to something one of us had said. And he said, man, he's like, never say what you ain't going to do. And then he went on to recount all of these examples from his own life. He's like, man, when I was younger, I said I was never going to get married. And then I got married. And then I, I said I was never going to have kids. And then I had kids. He said, there's so many things I've said I was never going to do. And then it happened. And so I think what he was trying to caution us against is just don't be so foolish as to think that you know what the future holds. The future is unknowable and uncertain, and that's why it scares us. And, and as humans, we want to make sense of it. We crave you know, clarity and certainty, and so we want to, we want to reach and try to make, make it feel more certain. So we make these declarations. And I've been thinking a lot about this lately. I've been thinking a lot about his advice and this sort of caution against thinking that you know, we're smarter than the future when I look around and see how companies are trying to navigate what to do with all these employees they sent to work from home in March 2020. Maybe you're in that boat. Do you bring them back to the office? Do you let them work from anywhere forever? Is it some kind of magical hybrid mix? Whatever that happens to mean. And I think one of the mistakes that I'm starting to see people fall into because this is such a tricky, a tricky um, problem to solve. We don't even really know what our employees want or what's going to work best post pandemic yet. We're just starting to, to emerge. Is that people are doing what, what we were being cautioned against. You know, never say what you ain't going to do. You've got companies saying we're going to work from home forever or we're all going to come back to the office. And I think that's foolish. Because I think inevitably you're going to end up regretting that because you just don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how things are going to change or have changed. We just don't know what's coming. And so if we want to, I think, find our way through this new, unsettled, disruptive future of work, if we're going to do this successfully, it's not about making declarative statements. Uh, it's not about sort of putting our, our, our flag in the sand and then defending it at all costs. I think that will be really costly for any teams or employers that do that. Instead, what you need to do is master five words. It boils down to five simple words. And when you learn these and you learn to use them, it will set you free to do what you need to do to survive and thrive in the new future of work. And here they are. I don't know. Let's experiment. I don't know. Let's experiment. That's what we need to get really comfortable with because the future is unknowable. And so when we admit we don't know, we set ourselves free. And experimentation is a way to move forward to get more information and to do it in a way that is not definitive or declarative. We can go test. And so in case it's been a while since you've been in science class, let me break down just very quickly what goes into an experiment because this might be something that's been a while for you. There's basically three things. One, you have to have a hypothesis. A hypothesis is sort of a speculation about what you think the right answer is, and it's a speculation that you can test. So it might be, hey, we think that the best thing to do is we're going to bring um, or we're going to have all employees work on site on the same days as their teammates for two days a week and then three days you can work wherever you want. That's what we think is going to be the best path towards uh, improving performance and engagement. And so you that's your hypothesis. You can test that. Which brings me to step two. Step two is 
test. You test your hypothesis. This is usually what we think of as experimenting. Maybe you run a pilot program with a small, you know, with a, a division or a department. Maybe it's a, you go to your employees and say, listen, we don't know exactly what the right answer is, but we want to experiment with you. Here's what we think is the best answer. We're going to try this for 60 days. We're going to continue to get feedback from you. We'll see how it goes and then we'll see what we learn and we'll make adjustments and we'll try something new if it doesn't work. Right, so test your hypothesis. And then the third piece is to measure and assess, did you prove or disprove your hypothesis? Right, experimentation always results in learning. At the end of an experiment, you'll know more than you did when you started. And then you can take that information and you go right back to the, the beginning of the process and you start a new experiment. If you didn't figure it out, if you didn't prove your hypothesis to be true, then you go and you do another hypothesis and you test that. If you have a really big organization, you might be able to run multiple hypotheses and test multiple things at the same time through multiple pilots. But, but the bottom line is that you don't have to know the answer. You just have to make, make a guess at it, make a hunch based on what information you, you know, whatever information you have, form that hypothesis and go test it and just keep testing. And if you involve your employees in it, you explain to them the approach you're taking, they will support you, they'll give you feedback, and the stakes won't feel so high because they don't feel like you're saying, oh, you either have to work from home forever or you have to work from the office. It's like, hey, we don't know, we're gonna figure it out together. That's the power. I don't know, let's experiment. That will set you free to master the future of work, to navigate through it successfully, and to make sure not only you, but also your employees thrive in this new frontier that's ahead of us. I hope this is helpful. Um, good luck with experimentation. I would love to hear about your progress if you do or are running some experimentation. So drop me a comment. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.